Well, let's demystify this crosswind component chart. It's really pretty straightforward. I've got these rings here, which represent the total wind. I've got, well, I've got these rays, radials it look like, and those represent the angle of the wind. I've got these horizontal lines, and those are the headwind component, or tailwind. And these vertical are the crosswind components. So let me put a simple example in there without all those lines. I've got something right here, this aircraft, I'll say, or this, um, this position Z. This is a position of some, some arbitrary wind. I can read over here. I can read the headwind. You see it's about 26. And down here, I'm seeing a crosswind. Now it looks like about 27 or so. And this arc represents the total wind. It looks like about 38. And you can see it represented here in vector form. Crosswind, headwind component, and combining to make the total wind. You could also look at this a couple other ways. You know, you could do this with geometry. And crosswind squared plus the headwind squared equals the total wind squared. Pythagorean theorem. And if you wanted yet another way to do it, you could do this. You could use trig. And if you have a given angle, we have the relationship here, the adjacent, the opposite, and the hypotenuse using your designated trig functions. But this is not a math class for this because you might not have all this stuff with you. You will have this chart. This chart doesn't need any batteries. You don't need a calculator. You're going to learn how to read this chart, and from this you can correlate headwind component, crosswind component, total wind. Let's do an example. Well, there's our 33 degree quartering headwind, and there is the speed of 23 knots. All we need to do is, well, we got this point right here. All we've got to do is read. And I'm going to see right there. I'm going to read these numbers right here and right here. You see, this one is more than 19, less than 20. And I would think that that one looks like about, well, 19.2. That's going to be our headwind component. And down here, this is. I see a little bit more than 12 in the middle between the 12 and the 13, 12 and a half. And if you want to see that a little more clearly, let's, um, let's clear up the rest of the drawing. And you could see it right there. This arc represented 23 knots. This is 33 degrees wind. And that's where I got my headwind component, crosswind. Let's do an easy one. I've got 40 knots of wind. Wow, it's a lot of wind. And it's coming at me 30 degrees off my nose. So I've got the obvious intersection right here. And it looks to me like it lines up exactly right here on for a crosswind component of grab that of 20. And I'm estimating this at 34.6. So headwind component, crosswind component. But let me show you another way to think of this one, if you remember your um, math class. If you're imagining the vectors like this, the headwind, the crosswind, you could make a little triangle out of it. The wind's coming at you from 30 degrees. Well, in this right triangle, this is one of your, well, your infamous special right triangles. And we know the ratio of the sides are 1, 2, radical 3 in a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And if this side is 40, then this side is half. And, of course, this side is radical 3 times that 20, about 34.6. So, a little bit of math for you. Well, this time I've got a tailwind by 20 degrees. So that's going to be represented by this radial. And I've got, let's see, this, this arc is... 20, the next smaller arc inside, that would be 18. I went by twos here, you can see on the scale. 
this would be the intersection of 20 degrees tailwind and 18 knots of total wind. So all I've got to do is read my components like this, and that's going to be 16.9, or roughly 17 of tail of crosswind, sorry, and 6.2. I have a negative there, well, negative headwind. I'm going to call that 6.2 knots of headwind. And the diagram on the airplane might look like this. I've got a vector pushing me 6.2 from behind and a stronger component from the side. Let's use the chart in a slightly different way. In this example, I have an aircraft that has a maximum allowable crosswind component for takeoff and landing of 16 knots. So I'm going to look at the 16 here, got highlighted in red. Remember, that's down here on this scale. That's on the crosswind component scale. And if the wind is coming at, uh, coming at me at 56 knots, well, what's the maximum velocity of the wind? And all I'd have to do is read this arc. And I can see right here, nine, roughly 19.3.